I just showed up like the day before. I was like, oh, this is a quaint little campus on Long Island. I thought it was like a community college. and You didn't even know like what it looked like or anything? No, I just oh. showed up like the day before with my parents. <laughs> and like we looked around the campus. I was like, wow, this is kind of cool. Saw New York City, you know, did like the tourist kind of stuff. Like, oh, wow, Times Square, you know. <laughs> Were you smile. like into boating before? No, I had no idea what I was going to do out there. Like I just showed up and I was like, okay, cool. Like free college. Let's, let's do this. You know, it seems intense, bro. <laughs> oh dude, it was, I remember uh, standing in line, they shaved my head and I'm just getting yelled at. And I'm like, what did I get myself into? I love lamp. Do you really love the lamp? Or are you just saying it because you saw it? I love lamp. I love lamp. Lamp. Wish you were a lamp. It would light up when you get touched. Lamp. 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 She might be dead. What's up? What's up? I don't want to be recording. Oh, I right. don't okay. want to be on it. Clarifying from the jump <laughs> that Alyssa does not want to be recorded. Uh... She wishes this was an audio-only podcast, but thanks for tuning in to I Love Lamb, <laughs> a video podcast featuring uh, two people in a relationship, talking about relationships and uh, what could go wrong. And today we have Forrest and Colleen. What's up, y'all? Hello. Hi. Thank you so much for coming aboard. This is uh, episode eight of our little podcast. Yeah. We're very excited to be yeah, Thank you. as you can see, we're doing some different stuff with uh, the cameras. Man, I kind of, <laughs> this one's pissing me off. Really? Can you trade me back? I mean, yeah. Can you reach it? If... All right. Is it not going to reach? No. What about this one? Does that work? <laughs> How do you hear me? Do you hear me good? I hear you, Lima Charlie. All right, I have you say. <laughs> okay, I'll trade back with you, babe. I'll, I'll make just, it work. I'll just do this when I want to talk, you know. I mean, y'all are good to share that one. It's just better position to, like... I don't want to fight her. Hi. She's scrappy. All right, so me and Forrest know each other from work. Wink, wink. Yes. Yeah, from the, you know, the training pipeline, from uh, back in Pensacola to here, VP30. It's been a minute, bro. It's good to see you. Yeah, it's it's been a little bit. Although, I did see you in the new year just that one time. Yeah. Where was that at? Where was that at? Was that, uh... I, I checked out your place in Riverside. Oh, yeah, that's right. Yeah, we were playing, uh, what, Beard Eye? Yeah. Yeah, that was a good time. Or was it, I guess it was before the new year, because I'm sober now for the year 2023. Yeah, it must have been uh, awesome right before function. Christmas, but that was, uh, that was a good time. Or did I go and just not drink? I forgot. Dude. No, that's, there's no way. No, I think you went sober. Did I? Yeah, because you, you drove all the way there, and it was like... Probably like it, this was in the new year? Yeah. Oh, okay, well, well dang. Well, we're already into March. Well, anyway, uh, what's new with you, man? About uh, to head out. How to head out the door, huh? Yeah, I'm about to go back out and uh, go out to Japan. So that's going to be a lot of fun. Yeah, man, I'm excited for you. Yeah. And uh, we have here as well, Colleen, your wife. Yes. Hello, hello. Exciting. Yes, it is. Thanks for coming by. Of course. It's this uh, again. first podcast experience. Yeah, first time we're ever. we're doing it. We're doing it live. We're doing it just at the crib. Let me let me try and trade back. This is gonna make it a little messy, but yeah, we still hear you. Okay, Colleen, tell us. Um, you're you're in the Coast Guard. You're in the Coast Guard. Hell yeah. Yeah. And you're stationed in Tampa. Tampa. Yep. So I'm at Sector St. Pete in the Coast Guard. I originally started on a cutter in Miami. And that was a lot of fun, really great crew, uh, a lot of work. And then I was able to, every two years on a cutter, you switch out. So my next pair of orders was to St. Petersburg, where I do pollution response now. That's badass. Yeah, it's fun. It's different, very different. A whole other part of the ballgame. St. Pete's is beautiful. It is. The beaches are so nice. Yeah, we, uh, we went to visit a friend from high school. I guess college as well. Your high school. My high school. <laughs> well, we didn't grow up I know, but just clarifying for the audience. Yeah, for sure. Uh, did you like St. Pete's? Yeah, they that? had, like, really cool places to eat, I feel like, that we don't have here. Yeah, like, I remember you? Cali. Did you go to that be- breakfast place? Cali? Mm-hmm. Yeah, it's really good. It's so good. Yeah. 
Is that where we got? Uh, is that more in Tampa? Oh, maybe. But it was amazing. There's one in St. Pete, so that's, oh, okay. that's why I know Cali, but yeah. Dude, yeah. Tampa and St. Pete's is freaking, it's dope, for sure. Yep. Well, thanks for swinging by to Jax. You're on your way up to Savannah, for yeah. mentioned. Yeah, yeah, my dad's um, bringing his cat down. He's a travel nurse up there in an RV. Um, that's a cool lifestyle. Yeah. Dang. Yeah. Keeping it interesting, for sure. Yeah, yeah, he just started it. He likes it. Yeah, he's living that uh, nomadic lifestyle now. <laughs> the nomad land. Yeah, nomad Dude, land. that was... <laughs> Oh, my God. I don't know why in that instance I was the guy was like, this is actually pretty good, y'all. Well, There's we, no way. Yeah. Well, we were all just, like, sitting there, like, watching it. We're like, what is going on? Just, right like, now? this is – I think I was just buying the prestige movie, like, drinking the Kool-Aid because I don't ever want to watch that again. It was, like, cool. For those of y'all who don't know what we're talking about, it's, like, a 2021 yeah. Frances McDormand movie. She win, She won the Best Actress, but – uh. Yeah, she's, like, traveling around semi-employed or... Yeah, she was, like, uh, if I remember correctly, she was, like, working out of the uh, Amazon, like, distribution centers, trying to make, like, a little extra money right. so she could fund her, I guess, nomadic lifestyle. It was, like, a seasonal deal, yeah. right? Yeah. Sorry, I'm, I'm just <laughs> transfixed on this. I You're The like fact that cat, it does bro. 15 minutes, like... It's so small. Yeah, yeah like, how the do they even size. know how much sand to put in? You know, it's, like... Someone did some physics, I swear. Yeah, but, like, you'd have to know how big each little bit. Or maybe they just have, like, fingers. a big thing and then, like, let it go through. Then at 15, they're, like, cut it off and, like, bottle that. Bottle it. Yeah. yeah. I don't know. Bottle <laughs> it. She's got a point. Yeah. I'm sure, I'm sure they did their homework. It could be 16 minutes. Who knows? It might be 15 minutes and, like, two seconds. I swear I've verified it before. Unless. <laughs> the next one, we can, like, start the timer at the same time we flip it. That'd be crazy if it was, like, spot on. It's got to be spot on. I feel like I've checked it before, and it was spot on. Well, we'll know in a little bit. Otherwise, I would have <laughs> broken it out of yeah. anger of being lied to. <laughs> okay. Right, so, dang, we watched that with Jules back at the old uh, Brooklyn Riverside. Yeah, that was, uh, that was a good time. We were all neighbors, man. Yeah, dude, what a he... fun-ass freaking VP30 was just a... Paid vacation, I swear. Yeah, it was so much easier then. You'd just be like, hey, what are you doing? Oh, I'm just hanging out by the pool right now. It's like, yeah. cool. You want to hang out? Yeah. Like, yeah. You want to watch a movie? Yeah, let's do it. It was you, me, Jules. Uh, Jake. Yeah. Jake Fer- Fernandez. And then I know that Kevin uh, Pinchert was there, and then uh, Katie was there for a little bit, too. Katie Harrison. Uh, Brad Seekman. Seekman, Austin, and uh, EP3 guy. Oh, Dalton. Dalton were there too. Yeah. Jeez. Now we uh we all work for a living. Well, kind of. <laughs> yeah, we're Yeah, it's been busy, man. Do you keep up with any of those Whidbey guys? Uh actually, so when I took leave, I went up there to uh flew into Seattle and saw oh, all word? those people up there, yeah. Oh my gosh. I I've, I've been meaning to do that. I'm trying to do that this summer. Yeah, man. The Pacific Northwest is absolutely gorgeous. Uh Colleen and I went up there uh what was it? End of February? Yeah, and uh, fortunately, when we got up there, like, it was clear as day. You got into uh, Seattle, and you, you could see out. the Olympics. Like, you could see everything. It was just clear as day. Like, the mountain ranges was there. It was gorgeous. Uh, we took the, the ferry over to Whidbey Island, and uh, it was just it's unbelievable out there. Did you see uh, Travis Bogard? Uh, no, I haven't. I might have to bleep that. I might bleep that. Anyway. <laughs> yeah. Okay, so do you want to... I hate to say, like, just talk about yourselves. Do you want to talk about your relationship? Let's start from the very beginning. Oh, uh, yeah, we <laughs> want to start from Bring the Bring it back to, back to, back to your childhood. chapter uh, one. Yeah, it all started <laughs> when I was a young lad. Who are you? Yeah. Uh, I guess the relationship kind of started when we uh, both uh, we both went to the same college. We went to the uh, Merchant Marine Academy. and did you uh, decide to get to that school? Yeah. Oh, how did I decide yeah. to get there? What, what's the journey that got you to the Merchant Marine Academy? Oh, wow, that's a journey. Uh I remember taking out the trash my uh, sophomore year of high school, actually. <laughs> oh, okay. Yeah, no, it was one of those, like, chance encounters. I know, it's weird. I'm not going to go all the way to the beginning. Like, yeah, I was born in Arlington, Texas, you know, like. Uh, but, like, yeah, I was taking out the trash, threw it into the dumpster, and uh, I guess one of our neighbors, he was a uh, Naval Academy graduate, and he was doing some physical therapy for his knee after a, uh, he was post-surgery. And I kind of ran into him. His name was Harvey, and we just ended up kind of talking, and, uh. He was like, "Yeah, uh, so you're in high school. Like, what are your what are your aspirations?" I was like, honestly, I I don't really know what I want to do, where I want to go. I just know that like I kind of want to do something 
interesting, something worthwhile. And he was like, you know, uh, military is a great place for that. You should definitely give that a shot. Like, uh, he was telling me his story about how he was a guy from, like, North Dakota in the middle of nowhere. And uh, essentially he applied, like, three times. Like, one year he applied, nothing. Next year he tried again, nothing. Third year he was like, I'm not, I'm not even going to try, like, bothering again. And he ran into some, like, Naval Academy, like, graduate that was like, hey, you seem like a really good candidate. Like, have you thought about applying? He's like, yeah, I have. I've applied twice. And he's like, oh, well... Let me uh, be a recommendation for you. And then sure enough, he got in. But he was the guy that, like, opened that whole world uh, to me. This is what, OCS? No, this was, uh, this was like, sophomore year of high school. So No, sorry, uh, the person in your story. Oh, Harvey, he, he graduated from Naval Academy. So, okay. Uh, he lives out in Hawaii now with his wife. But, uh, yeah, he was just a really good dude, very easygoing. And, like, that was the only time I ever really interacted with him ever. Like, after that, it was just kind of like one of those moments where it's just, like, chance encounter – Changes the course of your life, and that's just it. But he planted the seed of, like, oh, shoot, this is something I might want to do. Yeah. Yeah, Yeah, that was exactly it. Like, uh, from then on, I was kind of like, well, crap, what do I need to do? And I was, like, looking at, I haven't done any sports. I don't do any extracurricular activities. I I didn't do anything. I just, like, went home and just, like, went fishing. You were, were like, an NPC up to that point. Yeah, pretty much. Although, you said fishing. That's, that's, (laughs) you know, that's something. Well, I mean. I thought you were going to say you just, like. Stared at the walls, or yeah, I just you know did did some like Rain Man kind of stuff, you <laughs> yeah. know? real real creepy. You didn't do any sports. You just came home and just stared. Yeah, I was a psychopath, just waiting for like out. your initiating <laughs> action. Yeah, but uh, yeah, that was that was kind of like the the thing that just shifted my course because like I really didn't have a good idea of like what I wanted to do. Like I had a good idea of like what I enjoyed. Like biology was really cool. I liked animals, you know, like zoology, that sort of stuff. Like I wanted to be a marine biologist because. Who didn't love Steve Irwin when you were a kid, right? Yeah. But uh, uh, chemistry was kind of a big thing for me, too. R.I.P. Steve, man. Yeah, R.I.P. Steve. We're going to get those freaking We'll get those to raise. Yeah. (laughs) We'll make them pay. (laughs) But, uh, yeah, I had no idea what I wanted to do. And that that kind of just put me on the path. And eventually, like, I put in a lot of hard work. And uh, eventually I got a nomination to the Merch Marine Academy after putting in a lot of time wrestling, running track, uh, I was in the school play, like, my senior hey. year. Like, I was making up all that lost time that I had. theater stuff. And, I was uh, about that, man. Oh, I love theater, man. I did West Side Story, and that was a lot of fun, especially when they were like, congratulations, you're a shark. Go get a spray oh. tan because you're really white. <laughs> oh so that was, uh, that was funny. The sharks are supposed to be Puerto Rican? Or? Yeah, they're Puerto Rican. Okay. <laughs> yeah, I didn't make it as a jet. I didn't dance very well, and I didn't have any of the singing voices, so they were like, <laughs> That's okay. That's hilarious. They're like, you'll just kind of, you'll kind of just be there. I forgot you're from the DFW, man. Yeah, DFW. I love it out there. Uh, I was just over there. Yeah, it's uh, it's grown so much, though, DFW. like yeah, uh, it's crazy. I, I went there, back there, because I, in high school, I moved from Texas to Kentucky. I stayed there for a little bit and then moved to Tennessee. And uh, I'll get back to the point of how we met. You're good. This is like all the little tangents, oh, yeah. but we'll no. get there. But uh, what happened was I went back. And, uh, like, you've been to the DFW airport, right? Mm-hmm. Yeah, you remember all, like, the traffic and everything, like, all the roads oh, are yeah, always man. under construction? Yeah. Yeah, like, uh, when I came back, dude, everything was, like, six-lane highways. Like, everything was, like, cleared up. There was all these housing developments. Like, everything was completely different. Yeah, man. They have definitely upgraded the infrastructure. I actually used uh, Love Field the uh, last couple times, but uh, DFW is definitely blown up. Yeah, comparatively. It's, it's huge. Anyway, so to get back to it, Merch Marine Academy, right? So I had no idea what this was. I just showed up, like, the day before. I was like, oh, this is a quaint little campus on Long Island. I thought it was, like, a community college. and You didn't even know, like, what it looked like or anything? No, I just oh. showed up, like, the day before with my parents. <laughs> and, like, we looked around the campus. I was like, wow, this is kind of cool. Saw New York City, you know, did, like, the tourist kind of stuff. Like, oh, wow, Times Square, you know. <laughs> Were you, Smile. like, into boating before? No, I had no idea what I was going to do out there. Like, I just showed up, and I was like, okay, cool. Like, free college. Let's let's do this, you know? It seems intense, bro. <laughs> oh, dude, it was. I remember uh, standing in line. They shaved my head, and I'm just getting yelled at. And I'm like, what did I get myself into? Oh, man. Yeah, that was uh, quite an experience. But uh, it was a good experience. And uh, at no point was I like, oh, yeah, you know, I can always quit. Like, my parents dropped me off, and I was like, yeah, you know. I guess I'm here for the long run now. It's like four years. So for those of y'all that don't know, like merchant marines have to like spend a good 
bit of time like actually out at sea. Like, yeah. So undergrad. can you all talk to that a little bit? Mm-hmm. Yeah. So we're uh, both deckies. So uh, the top side people doing navigation, uh, cargo operations, uh, all that sort of stuff. And uh, for us, we needed what 330 sea days or something. Yeah. So for the deck side, you need a full year, 365 days to get your unlimited tonnage third mate. And then for engineers, you needed 330 days. Um, as well and like a certain type of vessel tonnage wise to get that license and then it is one of the f- it's the fifth service academy so on top of that like you have a commitment but it's not like oh you must be in this branch for your commitment for x amount of years you can either sail on your license and go navy reserve or get into a, any of the branches and serve time there yeah so it's kind of cool like if you don't know what to do like it opens your eyes to the world oh yeah i, I can imagine and uh, Forrest has told me, like, throughout 30 and stuff, just all the places that you've been, like, coast of Africa and stuff. Like, I can't imagine <laughs> just, like, this is, like, basically a college student, and you're just, like, part of, like, this working crew. This yeah, show, you know? no cell phone, just, okay, guys, go have fun, 16, 17, 18, 19 years old, like, go well, for it. <laughs> yeah, well, not that young. Okay. Well, yeah, but, like, yeah, we were, like, we'd finish our freshman year, right, and they had what was known as sea year and it would be broken up into like a four month like period. And then you'd have like an eight month period. And, uh, what would happen is your sophomore year, you'd go out for four months and you'd hop on like a couple different ships or you'd stay on just one and you would get your sea time and you do these things called sea projects where just like you'd have these big, I mean, just like, there, there were different the projects were like different topics that you had to know for, like, what you would be tested on eventually to get your license. So you would have, like, a cargo project for a certain type of cargo. You would have a stability project, nav rules, et cetera. Definitely sounds like a good, like, learning environment for people who are like, I need to do, not just, oh yeah, you know, very hands hit on. the books and then, you know, yeah. Definitely. Yeah, for being a college, I mean, it was very much a technical school. Like, you learned the trade. And uh, it was really good experience, like, uh, going out to – the med- the Mediterranean for like the first time on like a uh, USNS vessel like we were doing like con reps vert reps which are just like you have the helos coming in picking up pallets and flying them over to like the destroyer or whatever ship they have Dang. yeah and then the uh, the con reps they would like get like an M14 and like put a plug on the end of it with like a line tied to it and they would shoot that over which was really cool and what they would do is they'd have the two ships keep in like the same distance from each other the entire time that they're doing like the cargo ops where they're slewing stuff over from one ship to the other. So it was a, it was a really cool experience and you got to see like, you got to see the world, you got to do a lot of stuff. You got to go to some pretty exotic ports too. It was a, it was a good time. Would you say it's comparable to the sweet life on deck? Yes. <laughs> Just like it. What is sweet life on deck? Uh, the sweet life of Zach and Cody. Have you ever watched it? Oh, no. no. They did like a <laughs> sequel series where instead of in a hotel, they're on a cruise ship. Oh, I, I have actually oh. never seen it was, sounds like a fever dream. Yeah. It was pretty good. <laughs> it sounds like something that I made up like when I was <laughs> sick in the hospital or something okay. like that. Yeah. But to get back on topic here, so we uh, were in some of the same classes together freshman year, and she was dating a guy at the time, but I was always interested. I always thought she was a pretty smart girl, and uh, we were on uh, the training ship over the summer, and... Slowly, I tried to work my way into her life, and I did. <laughs> I succeeded, got my claws in. And uh, we stayed good friends throughout the time at school. She uh, did her stuff. EMTs. Yeah, we were both EMTs, so, like, we had an EMT program there. And uh, we did that. We both, like, graduated our senior year with our unlimited tonnage third mate license. And uh, we both kind of, like, went on our own different paths. I went Navy flight, and then she went Coast Guard, but ended up getting deferred a little bit. But, uh, yeah, it wasn't until I was in flight school that I started reaching out to her saying, like, hey, how are you? Like, her friend uh, Ella told me when I was in uh, Charleston, I think it was, like, right before we started primary, so, like, March of 2020. Yeah, I I was talking to her, and she was like, yeah, did you know that Colleen's single? And I was like, what? (laughs) Yeah, and she was like, she was like, I saw that look in his eye. (laughs) I was like, hmm, interesting. And then slowly over the course of that year, like I'd 
we'd always like kept in contact like on the ships like we'd send emails to each other because that was like the only way that you could communicate with anyone on or off a ship and like we'd always check up on each other like hey you good like yeah i'm fine it's mainly also making sure he didn't get me left behind and did his projects because they'll kick you out if you didn't do his projects (laughs) yeah i was you've uh, always been looking out for for a forest yeah i'm a master procrastinator (laughs) oh my god i have a question about the emt thing like how does that work on the ship do you just like sprint like i imagine there's not an ambulance so like no there isn't that part uh so we were kind of like I guess assistance because they would have some person that was dedicated to like I guess the medical side of the ship, but like they didn't generally have medical experience. So like we'd be the most experienced like medical provider on the ship, and uh, if someone got hurt, like if they got hurt really bad, like I don't know, like a a crane fell on them or they need to get like airlifted out, like we would try to do everything in our power to make sure they're stable, and then they get picked up by like a helo or something, and they get flown to shore. Yeah, but I think that EMT program, it was useful on the ship, but it was mainly for the school because we have, like, an in-dock, and they wanted, like, EMT personnel to take care of the people that would, like, fall out or have, like, injuries. Like, we would stand duty mostly at the school and then volunteer out in Great Neck. But it was just, like, a fun program we could get into. Yeah, I think it would be, like, useful, too, to know and stuff. Yeah, it's that definitely hella helped qualified. Yeah. Did anyone fall overboard? Not while I was on now. Did anyone ever do a cannonball? (laughs) I mean, they can. You can do anything once, right? (laughs) Right. Oh, trust me, I know. (laughs) Yeah. (laughs) Yeah, I mean, (laughs) yeah, I guess the big thing is not to let the intrusive thoughts win when you're on a ship. (laughs) Yeah. (laughs) People do go crazy, though. Like, on the ship, you have to, all the um, fire axes are screwed on in order to say in court, that if you go crazy, like, you had to be, like, fully conscious and willing to unscrew it to use it because people just go around. My brother had it on his ship. He went around with a fire axe to people's doors and just, like, went insane, and they had to, like, time down to a chair until they could get to the next Yo. Oh. Yeah, her, Like, people go crazy. <laughs> it wasn't her brother that went insane, though. Yeah. No, was no, the, the way you were saying someone, it sounded like that, your brother. No, it did kind of sound. my brother, no. Someone were, on your brother's boat. Yeah, on my brother's boat. For, I think they were underway for like 30 days. And I was going like to say, what's, what's the longest y'all have been just out at sea without coming to land? I mean, fortunately for me, I didn't stay out too long, but I knew one guy that was on a ship, the same ship, for like six months. I don't know <laughs> how many port calls he made, but like, that's a long time to be on a ship alone mm-hmm. with a bunch of old people complaining about alimony and like I their second someone. and third wives. <laughs> I knew someone who was on a ship for four years. Same ship. What? Military oh, receive like command. Yeah, four years. For did four they years. Enjoy it. Yes. They did. At that point, you either <laughs> enjoy being on it or just. I guess I you think, just hate your life. I, I think it'd be kind of nice to not have your phone and stuff and be like away from that, but just for like a little. You bit. just see it as like some kind of like meditation retreat. It's nice no. for a little bit, but then you just become. There's a day where it no longer is fun to just, like, yeah. isolate. It's like, oh, my gosh, I'm alone. <laughs> I actually pre-friend, appreciate friends and family. Yeah. And I want to call them. Yeah. I mean, it's definitely a, a good time to really reflect on it. And, like, that that was part of one of the sea projects, too, that we had. Like, our second sailing, they had a humanities project. And uh, one of the prompts, they had, like, three different prompts for us. And one of them was uh, existentialism. And... I'm not much of a, uh, I'm not really the best at English, but, and nor do I have any passion for it, but I really had an existential crisis on that ship. (laughs) And believe it or not, I got a really good grade because I was losing my mind. (laughs) (laughs) Yeah, but uh, that was, uh, yeah, it was a good time. Like you really reflect and it kind of like makes you appreciate like what's important in life because you're out there and like time stands still and then you get back from sea and like the world's different. Yeah, I bet that'd be so Whoa. wild. Like, it was like four months, like, okay, it didn't seem like such a long time, but in four months, like, uh, I was out at sea when the 2016 presidential, like, election happened, so, like, Donald Trump got, like, <laughs> sworn in and everything, and I'm just like, like oh, oh my hell? gosh, like, Yo. <laughs> what the heck, yeah, it was New weird. world order. Is this, is this the right world? <laughs> yeah. I was like, did I, did I jump a timeline or something? Like, There's, like, new, new music on the radio, which never Oh, happens. yeah. <laughs> the radios yeah. always play the same songs, and all of a sudden you hear, like, Interesting. So you got like this bulk update, yeah, yeah. instead of like this Could steady you, stream. 
Could you guys listen to music on the ship? Was it like CDs? Or yeah, like, like iPods. And uh, so they had like libraries and stuff. Like sometimes they'd have like a movie library or like, yeah, sometimes they'd have CDs, like that sort of stuff, books. But like whatever they had, that was that was it. And if you went through it, if you were a bookworm, that was all you had. Oh. A lot of people just download a bunch of stuff on their device, whether that's like your computer and then you put an MP3 or like an iPod or something. Like you download a bunch of stuff, not on Spotify, because that like deletes after X amount of days. Right, right. And then you like... Yeah. For four Smart. months, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> That's, like That's so phone. wild, yeah. man. Same with movies. Yeah. Yeah. They yeah. have Wi-Fi. Well, they might now. But yeah, some then. ships have Wi-Fi now. But, like, when we were doing it, like, I bought, like, I think a three terabyte hard drive. And it still requires, like, an external power source. But I had big boy so many movies, so many audiobooks, like, so many, so much music, like, everything. I, I filled that thing up with, like, like, two terabytes of just media. Pretty much anything you could think of. Because yeah, like, you're not going to have the option to download new stuff. Yeah, it's like you're there. It's like we had like a giant like file sharing like program at school. Like under, <laughs> that's kind uh, of under, yeah, yeah under the table, of course. But like, yeah, piracy is it's a modern thing. <laughs> I, I, would not, yeah, I, I wouldn't. Speak I, know to that. I, I know. I, I can't speak to that. On a <laughs> ship. Yeah. Friends just gave me things. So I don't know where yeah. it came from. I don't know where he got it. I don't know if he was the original source. But. Weren't you all like stopping pirates? Yeah, what? Well, yeah, you know, little modern pirates of the Caribbean, but of like the Mediterranean or the Gulf of Mexico or something. I don't know. Uh, okay, so Colleen, can we get your version of, of these accounts? Sure, 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 sure. Oh, yeah. this will be good. The female perspective. Um. First of all, what's the ratio like at uh, somewhere like the Merchant Marine Academy? Um. Bad. No, I think they prided themselves in being like twenty five percent female. Um, That's pretty reasonable, honestly. Which I think is reasonable. I had plenty of females in my classes. I, don't know, I guess it is a lower percentage than most schools, but it's also like a different field. Um, so I was like him. I didn't know what the merchant marine was. I didn't even know there was containers that brought merchant goods to us. Like. Totally oblivious. I had always wanted to be a vet my entire life until someone told me, like, a bit of reality when I was traveling because um, they were a vet. And I was like, okay, I'll rethink my choices here. And my Whoa, brother, what they tell you? Yeah, what uh, threw you off that you didn't um, That it's, it's really hard to start out on your own. You'll probably work for somebody else. Uh, it's a lot of school and a lot of debt, and it's very competitive. Um, so I was like, oh. I don't really know if I want to be in debt. I don't know if I really want to go in school that long. So I was like, okay, well, now I'm open to everything, anything. And my brother had always wanted to go in the services. Uh, so I, when I was driving him around, when I had my license, the Merchant Marine was at, like, one of the talks. Yeah. Oh, Sorry to interrupt here. Yeah. <laughs> go, Colleen. Sorry. Oh, okay. All right. All right. All right. have that intrusive thought. Wait, it's now. We can restart it. Ready? Wait, wait, wait. I did the countdown one. It's okay. I can edit this out. All right, all right. Ready? And let's get it. Okay. So the Merchant Marine. <laughs> Sorry for so rudely. We all had to do it. The Merchant Marine was like, hey, like, you can explore the world and you can do whatever, like, whatever branch if you wanted to or sail if you didn't want to. And I was like, okay, let me try it. And I went to the campus and they just needed, like, female bodies on their team. So I applied for, like, cross-country and the swim team. Swim team really liked me. I really liked the team. It was, like, a family. And I was like, that's where I want to go. So I got in. Um, first encounter with this one was probably at <laughs> – I was DD for a group of my friends when we had Liberty at Bangers. Was that the name? Oh, uh, yeah, yeah, it was Bangers. It was this, this is this somewhere in New York? or Yeah, this was this, this is little hole-in-the-wall bar Ho- near Hofstra University. Hofstra University. Yeah. It, it's probably been shut down since, but... They... Yeah, it was a place of debauchery and sin. Oh, um, wow. So I was DD. I was just hanging out, and this guy with a picture... <laughs> two pictures. Two pictures. <laughs> and I was double-fisting it. Talk, it starts talking, and then we get in a really deep conversation. I'm like, this is awesome. Yeah. Keeps me up the entire night, and then... Um, we drive back, split ways, whatever, and then see him in a bunch of classes, EMT. Foot in the door. That's a good first impression. <laughs> I enjoy the deep that conversation. Did he tell he was trying to, or did, was he like being 
better at being friendly? He was, it was more friendly, yeah. I was, or I was totally oblivious. I don't know what it was. But. I think she was more impressed by the fact that I was still coherent. After right. Two full yeah, pictures. that's kind of what I was thinking. <laughs> I like, mean, granted, can hold his <laughs> it was a steal, okay? So if you got there within the first hour of it opening, I think it opened at like 9 o'clock. If you got, if you got there within the first hour, you could get a pitcher for like 5 bucks. A.M. or P.M.? Uh, P.M. Oh. 5 a.m.? Yeah. I thought he said 9. My, 9, my, 9, oh, 9 a.m. Okay, my bad, my bad. Or 9 p.m., sorry. I'm not hearing anything. <laughs> but, uh, <laughs> yeah, so I was like, yeah, this would be great. And I tipped the guy, too, and he's like, okay, cool. And he, like, got, like, the whiskey glasses and, like, I guess topped off some, like, Wells whiskey and, like, dropped it in. I was like, heck, yeah, this is awesome. Oh, jeez. So I was housed, and it was a great time. We had a really And you were 21, right? Of course. No comment. Doesn't that change if you guys are, like, inter- on international water, like, the drinking age? It does, but... Technically, because we're part of the school, we're not allowed to drink till 21. Oh, gotcha. Sure enough. Is the rule. But they also can't track us, so I don't know. Yeah. <laughs> I, don't, I don't know. Anyways. <laughs> okay, so you saw him in some classes. Um, saw him in classes. He's like a class clown. Very funny. Um, that checks. EMT, hysterical, especially when we would do like, so you have to do like, um, Role acting, hysterical, and then training trip, and then at sea we kept in touch to make sure he did his projects, but also like a check in time because like I I did not take sea well, like I got very like existential crisis. Oh, I thought you were gonna say seasick. No, no, not seasick on the big ships. Yeah, I just like I thought I was like one of those girls. I was like I don't need my family. I was when I joined the Merchant Marine. I was like. I just want to leave my family. Like I can, I can do it alone. Like I don't need family. Like friends are cool, but like I got this. I went out to see. I was just like, and this like changed the course of my life. I was like, wow, the most important thing in life is friends and family, and it kind of like directed how I wanted a career or a job going forward. Is like that is definitely the most important thing. Um, so I try to keep in touch with as many people as possible, including him, um, which was the foundation then to after graduation we would always, like, check in when we didn't see each other, like, just say, hey, like, how's life going and stuff like that, um, which was cool. And then one day, he calls me at midnight, and I thought, yo, like, is this, like, a suicide call? Like, does he need a buddy? Like, yo. let me pick up this phone. Like, I'm Run in Baltimore that. at Dry Dock, and I'm just like, is he okay? And it's on Instagram. And I was just like, are you all right? He's like, Yeah. Yeah, there's a hurricane party here. We're getting hit in a hurricane in Pensacola. I'm like, oh, okay. <laughs> and uh, Hurricane Sally? Yeah, hurricane, oh, yeah, my gosh. <laughs> I was just so, like, okay. Yeah. And I'm, like, freezing outside in Baltimore. I'm like, this is fun. Yeah, so what happened was it turned into an episode of the Cribs, and I, uh, of Cribs, and I was, like, showing her the place. I was like, yeah, so this is the dock. It's underwater right now, but it's really cool. And it's just, like, black. Oh, like, yeah. Just nothing. And then there'd be, like, streaks of lightning and whatnot, just a bunch of rain coming down. And I'm just like, yeah, we got a whole bunch of people over. I'm hanging out with my Marines. Like, they're my they're my next-door neighbors, really cool people. Uh, I think their house is flooding, so they're going to stay here the night. Like, we were just – I was just housed. And I was having a great Bro. time. She thought I was, like, about to commit suicide. So, <laughs> I, I don't know. know. Why. It, was it was, like, funny. one of those weird timings. I was like, all right, I always pick a f- up a phone for a friend, so let me pick it up. <laughs> yeah, and that was the, uh, the Gateway uh, video call. Yeah. Okay. Yes, yeah. yeah, so that was what? Yeah. That so was then, like September of 2020. So then he called then, then he called like a week later, and then he started calling multiple times a week. And then, and I really enjoyed our conversations. And then one day I was just like, yo, like, I'm about to go out for a very long time, out to sea, because I'm on a cutter now in Coast Guard. And I was like, what's the dealio? Like, what do you want? Like, I'm tired of just like pussyfooting around what we're trying to like figure out here. Then. <laughs> yeah, I was nervous. <laughs> Shoot. Yeah, so uh, she uh, like went to bed, and I was like, huh, I'll just come clean. And this was after a night. I think it was a gallery night or something like that in uh, early those. November. It was good. It was a good time. But, uh, yeah, we were driving back, and I was like, oh, you know what? I'll just shoot her a message. And I, like, poured out my heart, and I sent the text. And it was, like, 1 a.m. coming back, and I was like, oh, God. I'm not going to know a yes or a no until morning when she wakes up. And I was like, this is awful. I regret this. I regret this immediately. Oh, this yeah, so the waiting, that was uh, 
Yeah, I wanted an answer, but I wasn't getting it. So that was probably the worst night of sleep I ever got in my life because I just didn't sleep. Yeah. But uh, yeah, she said yes. So November seventh, yeah. it was a it was a good day, yeah, very good day. Yes, yeah, so that was our anniversary for starting dating. So now we call that month anniversaries every seventh of the month. Oh. Go, Happy month anniversary. He remembers them more than I do. It's cute. It's a it's a big deal for me. That's sweet, man. What did you think waking up to that? Um, I was like, oh shit, like. He really poured his heart out, so I was like, okay. He really um, went there. Yeah. <laughs> and I appreciated that honesty. Um, so I, like, took some time to digest it, and then I was like, okay, well, let's." I think I said, like, something like, okay, well, email me. And I gave him, like, email just to see if he would email me, because that's the only way I could communicate on the cutter. And he did, and I was like, all right, this is cool. So, yeah, yeah we just went from there, but I really appreciated his honesty and coming clean. And then we, we also were, like, very much on the same page with everything. So it was good. Uh, by everything, do you mean, like, uh, kind of goals and, like, relationship goals? Yeah. Like, where like, do you see, like, what we, kind of family We aligned in, like, some of our topics when we were just talking. But, like, my biggest thing I told him was, like, look, like, I'm not just here just to date and, like, screw around and have fun. Like, I want to see, like, if we're a good match for eventually, like, to get married. Right. Like to I take, build some, yeah, to build, build something. Like I take dating very seriously, um, and he was like totally on page with that. So that was good. Yeah, yeah, it was that, and uh, eventually, like I guess I don't remember when it was in the relationship, but she got this book, and it was like nine essential conversations, and we mm-hmm. kind of like went chapter by chapter, and it was like asking big questions, like, "Hey, like, what do you, what are your thoughts about a family in the future? Like, what are your thoughts about in laws? Like." What about, like, previous relationships? Like, do you think that they could, you know, not hold anything against you for, like, that sort of stuff? It was, like, what about finances? What about, like, other things? It had, like, all these different conversations. We kind of went through it step by step, chapter by chapter. And, like, this was between her being on patrols out in the Caribbean because she was on a cutter then. So, like, we would try and make time for that. And uh, eventually we were like, yeah, I think this this would work. Like, we should definitely... Keep, keep going with this. And this was, like, during the FRS when we were doing all that. And then uh-huh. after we had finished the FRS, and right before I was supposed to go to Sear, I was like, it's now or never. I got to either spring the question, like, hey, you want to get married? Or I'm going to have to wait until I get back from deployment. So, yeah. like, uh, that was when we had that last URA where we went to uh, Hawkers. <laughs> and then she got housed by oh, the, uh, all the different yeah. shots that we were trying. Like, she's like, ooh, ginger shots. We were all up Ooh, shot down. of Hennessy. Uh, ooh, a shot points. of this. <laughs> ooh, lemon drops. Like, yeah, she had, no. like, she was keeping one <laughs> for one. Pack, yeah. yeah. Poor gal was keeping one for one with everyone. She was just, just toasted by the end of the night. We had been training for that. Yeah, we, we, we were ready. <laughs> she was not ready. She was having a great time, though. And then I think my favorite thing was we got back to the apartment, and she's just, like, passed out on the couch. She's got, like, a half-eaten sandwich of peanut butter. <laughs> And she's got her hand in a bag of chips, and she's just dead on the couch. I'm like, Colleen, let's go to bed. She's like, eh, yeah. I was like, Colleen, you got peanut butter on your face. She's like, eh, yeah. and I was like, Colleen, I'm going to leave you here. And she's like, no. no. Uh. <laughs> so then she got up, and, uh, yeah, that was funny. And then I uh, proposed to her the following day, and she was hungover, poor thing. I think that was the first night I threw up the next day when I'm, I was hungover. Like, I never... Up to that I point. I usually do not puke when I'm hungover that morning. Well, you usually don't get that drunk either. <laughs> do you think you got caught up in, like, our revelry, or did you know that something was coming from him? Or No, I oh. think I got caught up with your guys' revelry, yeah. <laughs> and, I, and I thought I was, like, I could handle a lot more than I probably could have. But I felt Been there. fine that night until the next morning. I was like, <laughs> oh, God, the Hennessy. <laughs> yeah. I don't remember anything The bill the comes Hennessy. due. <laughs> Yeah, and I mean, like, she asked a couple of the questions, like, hey, like, where is this going? Like, what are your plans? Like, that sort of stuff. And I was like, hey, like, I really want to spend the rest of my life with you and stuff like that. So she had, like, an idea, like, I was probably going to ask, but she didn't know when. Like, she was yeah. also asking, like, hey, if we're going to get a ring, like, what is it going to look like? Like, she was giving me, like, her ideas of, like, smart hey, communication. what kind of ring do you want? Like, what's your ring size? Like, all that sort of stuff. So she knew I was going to ask her. It's just when? she had no idea when. Because our big thing was, like, the military won't station you close together unless you're married. So we're like, okay, right. but our friends have done co-location. It. Yeah, co-locate. So, but our friends worked it out with being engaged. They're like, okay, maybe we can get engaged. So we kind of like sped it up a little bit, but I think it was all good timing. Yeah, I mean, it it, it worked. Like she was in Miami, I stayed here in Jacksonville, and uh, I'm very grateful to be here. Like Jacksonville's 
a really good city, and I really enjoy it here. I love Jackson. She's in Tampa, so even closer, right? Way closer. Yeah, it's like, yeah, uh, it's like four like, hours, three and a half. Yeah, it's like two hours closer than Miami. Okay. Yeah, so driving down to Miami was like a five, six hour drive with traffic. Like, yeah, I remember you taking some weekends to go down there. Yeah, every weekend I could. Yeah. Oh, oh shit! Oh, here it is. Here it is. No way! I have fifteen, sixteen, fifteen, eighteen, it's fifteen, nineteen, fifteen. Oh, it's over fifteen minutes. Twenty. Yeah, fifteen, twenty-four, twenty-five. That's it. I have fifteen, twenty-six. Did you get on the Amazon? Oh no. Nope. Yeah, fifteen thirty. Fifteen thirty. The fuck. Um, with that guy, the book you guys were discussing, did you do it over email? Uh, yeah, some of it. Like for the most part, we did it over the uh, video calls, though. It's mm-hmm. just there was a lot of like discussion that needed to be had because it would go through like, what are your responses? What does your partner think about those responses? What are your partner's responses? What do you think about your partner's response? Like, it's supposed so, to be done with like a counselor, but we would just like read a chapter. We're like, hey, we want a chapter done by this day. We'd write out our thoughts. And then we would, like, do it on a video call, like, discuss them and, like, write it down each other's. That's so healthy yeah. and mature. Yeah, yeah well, we, we try. Yeah, Sometimes we, try. we, uh, <laughs> we devolve into uh, immaturity, but yeah. it's, uh, we, yeah, there's a lot of growing that's required. That's so cool because uh, I actually was writing an outline for this, and I had uh, Notion AI kind of, like, write an outline for a relationship podcast. (laughs) And, like, segment one was relationship goals, which y'all, like, throughout your kind of whatever you want to call it, remote courtship, you, like, establish these goals. And then the second one, segment two, is communication, which just seemed like from the get-go, even though y'all are in different parts of the world, like, you have this steady stream of communication where you're able to, like, see how y'all align with these different things. We started out... Funny. I don't know when we created this, but we created like four pillars, and one was like communication, faith, um, reciprocation, and um, honesty. Honesty. So we try to always like go back to those in every situation. Yeah, and it covers about eighty percent, which is good enough for government work. But uh, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I mean, there, there's a hey, lot. That's, of, you know. Yeah, I mean, there's a lot of factors. These get too. degrees. <laughs> yeah, well, exactly. But uh, yeah, there's a lot room of room for improvement. You know. <laughs> Yeah, I feel there, you. There always is uh, room for improvement. But, like, we both come from a similar background. Like, we know what distance feels like. Like, we've had to be through that. We know what it's like to be separated from pretty much all your loved ones for an extended period of time. Like, it does suck. And, like, we've been pretty much a distance relationship for almost our entire time. Yeah, the yeah. entire time. Yeah, the, the entire time. <laughs> but, like, uh, like, it's... Being able to communicate, like, hey, this is how I'm feeling right now, or, hey, I need this, like, I need a video call, or whatever. It's like, hey, this is what's going on in my life. Like, being able to communicate that and being able to be on the same page is kind of the big thing. Like, you can't just hold something in and just expect them to read your mind. And that's been hard for both of us at times, but, like, yeah. it's uh, it's critical. Like, being able to express yourself is kind of the big thing. And it's scary to be, like, brutally honest. It's like, I don't... I told him straight up one time, I was like, I might get emotional when I talk about my feelings because I did not have parents that did that. Oh, it was more. Yeah. So it was like up. a whole new ball field. But like, I wanted to do it. And then we also took like a love language test. Ah. For that guy. And it was good because quality time was like both our number one. So it was nice that it matched up. And like, that's kind of easy over distance when we can phone call or something right. that's like quality Spend time it together yeah. it's easier than like physical touch because then that's kind of hard when you're yeah, doing that's distance kinda, relationship or gift giving what are the other ones yeah. active service yeah, yeah. Active i guess service, you can gift giving quality time there's like one definitely. other one words of affirmation that's yeah it, yeah. yeah that's got to be mine so. <laughs> you're doing Fire. great <laughs> <laughs> oh that kind of does segment segue uh what you were saying before uh another thing that notion ai wrote was a uh, conflict resolution so uh, do you have any tips for conflict revolu- resolutions for uh, the listeners out there? I'll start. Um, yeah. We did do this one. We wanted to do marriage counseling before we move forward from engagement to, like, getting married. Um, we only got one or two, unfortunately, because then the chaps moved to an uh, aircraft carrier. Selfish. But she gave us this one book, um, which we should restart. But she gave us some other tips. It's like... Don't ever go to bed angry. Um, if you need to take have like a code word, so like if you're getting heated, like have like a code word, like let's go get coffee or something. Like take a break, decompress, and then like 
talk about it, but have like a time within the day that you're going to like come back and talk about yeah, it. Yeah. And then also like social media, I, I, at social media, we found out this one trick, like, do you want um, solutions or do you want comfort? That prevents a lot of arguments, I find, because it's like, okay, do they just want, like, someone to, like, listen to them or do, are they looking for a solution? Are they open to solutions instead of, like, oh, you're nitpicking at me. Like, all I wanted you to was you to listen to me. So you're kind of trying to ask up front. Um, yeah. That's definitely a good tip, yeah. the one with, like, okay, if I need space to – draw a time that you come back and talk about it that way uh, you can like kind of cooler heads can prevail and then the person who wants to discuss it now doesn't feel like it's just being pushed off indefinitely yeah but that the other person is just using that time mm-hmm. to kind of compose themselves yeah yeah and that's a big thing too is like you gotta like being able to say hey like i can't articulate this right now like i i know what i'm feeling i just don't know how to explain to you how i am feeling this way like, that's perfectly fine. Like, sometimes we need to take a step back, like you said, and, like, clear heads prevail. And, uh, yeah, that's that's important. And realizing that, hey, you know what? Like, they're, they're fighting with something right now. Like, obviously, I'm not, I'm not the enemy. Like, they're not, they're not holding it against me. It's like it's an internal thing. Like, being able to recognize that and move forward and just go, okay, they're going to talk about it. It's just a matter of when. And then the big one for me is... Uh, don't say immediately what comes to mind because there have been plenty of choice words <laughs> that I've wanted to say that would have felt very good in the moment. So don't don't be the class clown in a relationship. Well, sometimes it, you know, it's like, dang, this is witty right now. I want to like respond like with the or fire yeah. retort or whatever, you know. Well, it's the the fight fire with fire, but <laughs> like, yeah, it's like slinging mud at each other, and it would it would feel really good to say what I want to say, but I know that at the end of the day, it's just going to make the situation a lot worse than right. it actually is. He's really good at that. He has so much patience. He could roast me if he wanted to, but he has so much patience. <laughs> like, you thank, going, you. thank you. Thank <laughs> you. Uh, yeah, a- absolutely. <laughs> That's what I there has been so many times that she's tried my patience, and I'm just sitting there, and I'm just like, she's not the enemy. She's not the enemy. It's not her. She's, she's not doing this on purpose. It's... It's just a matter of fact. It's just happening this way. But I still love you, so don't worry. Y'all are cute. Man. <laughs> this is some good ass. Like this is really following the the prompt of the show more than some of the other episodes. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Sometimes we like touch on relationship stuff and then just talk about anything. But I feel like, but you know, when when people are willing to be, you know, honest and kind of open up about like what works for them, I think that is going to grant a lot of value to our listeners. So we really appreciate it. Of course. Then uh, another one, this is kind of, I don't really know what frame y'all want to take it with, but I'll just put it here and let y'all run with it. Like maybe uh, how do y'all deal with intimacy as far as, well, you have different struggles, whether it's being remote and, you know, stressful work. And uh, I think the main one would be just being uh, separate. Like, do y'all feel like there's anything you do to address that or, you just make it count when, when you're together or what's up? Yeah, definitely the make it count when, when we're together. That's a big thing. Uh, when I was on deployment out uh, last time, this time last year, Colleen was uh, particularly miffed over uh, Valentine's Day because I didn't get her flowers. And, uh, <laughs> I remember that because it was like, hey, like, come on. Like, I, I know that you love me. I know you're doing the video calls. But, like, it would mean a whole lot to me. It would be really intimate if you got me flowers. And I got her flowers after the fact, but... It's that I wish you had thought about it first before I had to tell you what I was thinking. And, uh, I mean, it did help relieve some of the issue. Too bad the rose died because I got you that potted plant that I thought was just a bouquet of roses. But it was a nice rose. Was. It's dead now. But, (laughs) yeah. (laughs) It's all right. Neither of us have a green thumb. (laughs) Not here either, man. But, yeah, I mean, that's that's a good thing for intimacy, too. And then it's just like... uh, Every day, like, we'll give an update of each other's day, and I think the funniest thing was recently, like, the way I would do it was, like, going to work, at work, going to, yeah, doing this, going, doing that, and she's like, Forrest, I'm not a fucking log. That's what I'm about to say. (laughs) (laughs) What is this, like, a quarter, quarter day log? Yes. All conditions normal. I would have taken that one before. Yeah, yeah. 
<laughs> yeah, she, she's like, I'm not a fucking logbook. Just, like, be honest with me. And I was like, okay, fine. It's like, I, I let out a particularly nasty fart at the duty desk. <laughs> That's what, like, it made uh, the my paint, butt itches. Yeah, it, it made the paint, like, peel off the walls. Like, it was bad. It was a sharp scene out. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Like, you know, funny stuff like that. It's like... it. It, uh, saying like, Hey, I miss you. Like, you know, being like honest, like that's, that's a big thing too. And it's like, it really speaks volumes. Like you can run through the paces and do it as just that, like, Hey, good morning. Or you can go like, Hey, good morning, sunshine. How you doing? Like I've been missing you. Good morning, <laughs> Vietnam. You know, like it's stuff like that. Like she woke Full up energy. and she's like, hello. And then like sent just a shit ton of emojis. Yeah. And I'm just like, it's like three thirty in the morning as I'm going to a sim and I'm like, <laughs> <laughs> this is kind of funny. I'm tired. I'm like wiping the sleep out of my eyes, and I'm like, "All right, this is extra," but I'm I'm about it right now. You told me it would annoy you, so I did it. Yeah, she, <laughs> yeah. Fortunately, it worked against your favor. That that really is intimacy. I mean, and especially like when we're in you know military careers, when you know you need what bearing in the public face. You know what I mean? For someone you know on your phone to just be like, ah, "This is where I'm at." Like I'm feeling goofy right now. For you to know it, but you know no one else like that. Like that's like the definition of intimacy in, in a weird way. I think yeah. people always think intimacy is like you mean like underwear or like intimates. Or yeah, <laughs> I don't know. That's a very coded yeah. kind of word. I, I, but uh, I guess another one we kind of like. I don't know if it's weird, but when we order food, we like to share it. Like okay, oh, yeah. you can try a piece or maybe have more than a piece, and like we'll split it evenly. I personally love that. Um, or I'll flat out finish your meal so she doesn't have to get a box. <laughs> <laughs> so I guess that's another way. Um, yeah, it's yeah. it's the small things and it's it the really things is, that yeah. uh, demonstrate that you really put thought and care into it that really uh, that you can take away from. Like it's one thing to just say hey, good morning, and send a good morning text or hey, I made it home safely text. Like that that's a big one too. It's like hey, I know you made it home safe. Like that's really good. But like. Uh, it's like things that like really took thought. Like, hey, I laid out rose petals all over the floor, and it's like, oh crap! Now I got to sweep this up. But like, you know, it's just like, wow, that actually took time and effort, and you actually thought about it, and yeah. you know, made it happen. Like, surprise. Or order food when you're sick, or vice versa. Yeah. Even though we're far away, we can still do like a delivery to the door. Oh. That is sweet. Dang! <laughs> Someone opened the door. The other day. I, I just saw it as decluttering, but <laughs> it's yeah. the small things. Yeah. Take the compliment. <laughs> <laughs> no, I, I, yeah, I did it because I don't want you to be uh, watchless for the day. No, oh, wait. I thought you said watch list. I was like, she's on a watch list. <laughs> Not yet. <laughs> I was like, wow. <laughs> yeah, getting a free watch from the FBI. Wow. Well, I, I appreciate it, guys. Uh, okay, so something that's on my mind. The dual mill thing, uh, just all the different relationships that I've seen kind of be tested uh, from friends going out on deployments or people in, our, in my squadron. Do you have any advice for people trying to do dual mill or like any comments on like just the particular circumstances that people who are both like, or, you know, just one partner that's in the service that's going on deployment, like what what you're kind of going against as far as just being apart for work months at a time. I think I'm thinking of Mateo mostly. Yeah. I mean, shoot, we talked about it on episode five. Listen, to I love lamp on Spotify and, <laughs> and YouTube. But I mean, he, he's definitely grown from it, but you know, it's a learning experience for sure for a lot of couples. Uh, yeah. So I don't know his circumstances. I mean, it, it sucks. Like I've known a lot of people that, they got married or, like, they were in a relationship on deployment with someone, and then eventually they'd come back and, like, hey, yeah, that, that relationship's over. And I I don't think it's anything against them. Like, some people, everyone's on a different different timeline. Like, we're all Absolutely. running our own race, and uh, we'll all cross the finish line eventually. It's not like it's not like anyone – it's like Theodore Roosevelt said, you know, comparison is the thief of joy. And in that regard, like, anything that's 
worth fighting for, you will fight with everything you got in order to make it work. Like for us, it's been trying to make it work. And we have a lot of factors that help facilitate making it work. Like we're both merchant Marine. We know the suck of like being gone for a long time. Like, does it make it easier? Not really. Like by the end of the first deployment that I was on, I was gone for four and a half months and I was like, I miss you so much right now. Like it was, it was so profoundly like heart, heart wrenching to go like, I cannot wait to see you in like two weeks. Like it was, it was hard. And then this, this next deployment is going to be six months, but like, I'm going to miss the hell out of her. Like that's going to be hard, but I mean, we're just going to keep doing the same thing we did. Like, write letters to each other, you know, keep it, keep it intimate, keep it lovely, demonstrate that we still care for each other and that uh, we're still on each other's minds. Like that's kind of the big thing, just showing that we still care and that we're going to fight for it. Yeah. And I think, I don't know, I don't know what our, what's going to happen or what our secret to success will be, but I think we both are very sacrificial with our time and we'll, we'll try and call on if, operations happen and we can't like we also understand that um so just having that understanding that we're on the same team yeah it's big for us so demonstrating that work also having you know giving each other grace the benefit of the doubt for when things do get hectic as they do yeah and trust and, trust is big yeah trust is is huge and it's like we lean on those four pillars like faith honesty reciprocity communication, communication like those are all really big things and it does does a lot of the work for us like just uh sticking with the the basics is kind of the big thing well hell yeah Alyssa, you have any comments on the relationship uh part of the show i think we're about to probably take a break in a little bit and then i'll uh, uh, just whichever their system or And we are back on I Love Lamp. We've got Colleen and Forrest in the studio. Thank you for joining us, everybody. Uh, this is episode eight. If you have not liked and subscribed to us on Spotify or YouTube, uh, go ahead and do that as well. You can watch video episodes on anchor.fm. All right, let's talk about, uh, let's shine the light on what you're loving uh, what are you guys into right recently? Would you like to start? I like running. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Um, I ran cross country in high school and I had an amazing team. Then I switched to swimming in college and then I really missed it during my first tour in the Coast Guard when I was on a boat because it was just like in and out too much where I couldn't actually train and then found out I was going to St. Pete and going to be land-based I'm like, oh, I've always wanted to do a marathon. The first one I tried to train for, I got injured. And then I said it to him. He's like, yeah, sign up. I'll train with you. I'm like, damn it, done. So we trained for a marathon. Um, but I also listen to, like, a lot of running podcasts because I'm a geek over it. But that's about it. What do they talk about, like, stride length? And, um, like, some of them will talk and, about, like, like how gear? to train. Okay. And then some of them are just, like, talking to, like, the running celebrities, like people that do really well in races. Or oh, Olympics, like uh, Kipchoge? Maybe. Elliot I Kipchoge's the number one marathoner, I think. Is she? Yeah. Or, oh, he, yeah. He, yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah, she follows a lot it's of like the, two hour. Uh, like the female like half marathon, 10K, like marathon. Yeah, ultra. I try to follow the American ones. Yeah, um, she's American a, team. Yeah, but, you're uh, moving into triathlons now. Beth. What? Yeah, I've always wanted to do a triathlon. So now I signed up for a triathlon this April, but it's in St. Pete and they have red tide, which is like this algal bloom that creates like a lot of respiratory issues. Oh. So hopefully it's going to be gone by the time that race is there, but we'll see. Sounds risky, but you know, yeah. fun race. I'll just train in jacks. <laughs> That's what's up though. So what was your marathon training plan like? Like how many weeks? What kind of mileage were you getting up to? We started it really early just to like build a base and then... I got sick for a month, and then we came back. And we run run for PRs is, like, this training thing where you can get coaches, but they also have, like, free content. So we just, like, followed their map. And it's, like, usually, like, um, 
Eighty twenty rule, so eighty percent of your runs are easy, twenty percent of your runs are hard, and then you don't increase your mileage each week more than ten percent to just prevent injuries. So that's what we followed. And then we had a bit of a three weeks where we backed off on everything. Um, so we ran up to like twenty two miles was our longest run, and then three weeks we had like a taper they call it. So we backed off on a lot of the runs, got less mileage in that week to be more fresh for the race day. So yeah, it was fun. That's what's up. And y'all did this in January. Yeah, January, end of January, like January 29th, the Clearwater Marathon. Badass, you have, so you're looking to do another a triathlon before another marathon? Or? Yeah, yeah. So I know I some people do... catch the marathon bug. My my I uncle, Gordon, <laughs> that was just in Texas, he said he like did the first one and then he ended up doing like 21 marathons. I was like, I don't get it. But. Yeah, I, I, I caught the bug. I want to do a triathlon though because I also want to do an Ironman. My Whoa. good friend. I have a good that's friend that's doing Ironmans right now. I'm like, dude, I want to do that. So I'm doing a baby triathlon where it's, like, not a lot of distance compared to the Ironman. It's, like, a 5K and then, like, a what's the bike like? So the swim for the Ironman is, like, 2.4 miles. The bike is 112, and then it's a 26.2 run. That's yeah. for the Ironman. But the triathlon I'm doing is less than that. Yeah. So. That's what's up, though. Yeah. I did some triathlons in high school <laughs> when I was, like, really fit. Awesome. Relatively from cross country, and then yeah, I could not do that right now. No way, especially not this one. I'm not trying to drown. <laughs> Get kicked a lot. Especially like yeah. long distance, because you really have to have like resilient mind. Like I feel like a lot of times, like oh, I want to stop, I want to stop, and to like be able to override that and just keep going, I feel like it's a really cool skill to have. Yeah, and it translates into life. Yeah, well, yeah. you you build it though uh, over time, right? Like that that capacity. And yeah, gotta be responsible and like fucking take care of your body all, along the way. Oh, but, yeah. yeah, definitely developing that mind power. Yeah. Also, it's like you kind of get at least for me when I run, like I got over shin splints while we were doing the marathon training and stuff like that. It's like proper gear, proper form, that sort of stuff, but uh the the big thing was like in running, like they would get to a point where you just hit that zen mode. Like Yeah, dude. It it was uh it was pretty good, and, like, it became kind of a therapy. Like, my day would be so hectic, and I'd get back from work after, like, a 10-hour day, and I'd be absolutely just shot, like, emotionally, mentally, and I'd be like, okay, I'm going on this run. And it just recharge you, and it was kind of a big thing. So I I really enjoyed that portion, but, uh, yeah, it was a good time, and it was great getting to run with her to walk back to that intimacy thing, too. It was It gave a... Uh, it also gave accountability, and that was kind of the right. big thing, too. It's like, hey, I'm, I'm working on, on this. Run. You are, too. Yeah, I'm like, not going to let us down. Yeah, because there have been days where I was like, I don't want to run. She's like, me neither. But then she'd go for the run. I'd be like, well, crap. She <laughs> no, ran. I got to so go. I got to go. Dang. So that definitely helped. Like, doing it alone. Never do something alone if you can do it with someone else. I feel that. So yeah, I did it alone. <laughs> Alyssa started. We uh, were supposed to do this 15K together. But, uh. That was just this last Saturday. and uh, It's okay. I did it by myself. Oh, is that the Gate River Run? No, uh, I actually went back to Texas and did it in my hometown, the Fresh 15K. Oh, nice. Yeah. I did... I was going for an hour and a half, and I did like an hour 25 just because... Oh, nice. Just people, you know, just running with people just charges you up, you know what I mean? Yeah. Well, this you get fun. the race day, like, uh, energy, too. Definitely. You just go for it. You really feel it. But we'll run together in the future. Yeah. My lung collapsed in 2017 when I was on a run, so when I get, like, out of breath, I get, like, kind of nervous it's going to happen again, but if I'm, like, that's the only thing. It's just, like, a mental block, but I can for sure do it. I feel you. Yeah, that's, uh, that's terrifying. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. No, it's because no, I went Ew. on a run, and I was, like, out of breath more than normal, and I was, like, kind of being mean to myself. I was, like, you pussy, you need to keep running, so I did. <laughs> And I was still out of breath. I was like, oh, okay, this isn't normal. I went home and I was like out of breath, like sprinting. Like, took a shower, still out of breath. And I like, called my grandma. I was like, hey, um, I don't know. I can't like breathe. And she's like, go to the hospital. I was like, fine. But when I got to the hospital, someone got shot and the like doors were locked. And I like started getting like panicked. I was like, the hospital shut down. Like, what? But yeah, they were like, your lung collapsed. You're going to stay overnight. But it was fine. <laughs> Jeez. What a crazy story. Uh, okay, what about you, Forrest? What you up to? Uh, what you recently, kind of being sad because uh, I, I got injured like uh, when I was running the marathon. So 
I've been trying to heal up, but my knees, I guess I got really bad tendonitis in both of them. And I have neglected to do the physical therapy that Bruh. has been so wisely. <laughs> uh, yeah. You got to take care of your body, man. Not yeah. just your relationship. Yeah, that's true. But uh, a movie? Oh, yeah. Well, uh, yeah, but what, what am I passionate about? That was the question. Right? <laughs> yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> uh, hmm. I'm uh, still trying to work on getting my instrument rating. If you remember correctly, right, back yeah, when yeah. I was in uh, VP30, private pilots license. I got my private pilot's license back in, like, August of 21. And then uh, it's been a long fight because, I mean, you know how the squadron Finding are. the time. They yeah. don't care about it's, your flight plans and when the weather is going to be. When the was good, that's when they need you. <laughs> yeah, exactly. And it's always just like it, it's a fight because you know they're they're gonna get their time out of you. But uh, pretty much, I'm gonna go out in this deployment, get fully qualified, try to get that uh, get all the quals that I can, then come back and just uh, I have a Microsoft Flight Simulator on my computer, so I'm gonna try to do that a little bit. You got probably. the yoke and everything. Uh, yeah, but I'm not gonna bring that with me after uh, consulting with my <laughs> my agent. And uh, we got limited space. Yeah, well, I do. So the big thing is like you bring a husky. Yeah, I am. But like what I keep being told by just about everyone is, hey, man, it's not about how much you bring out there. It's how much you bring back. Yeah, and it's like bring as little as you can to bring back as much as you can, because uh, there's a guy that I know. He was one of my neighbors as well back in Pensacola. He was saying that the Japanese whiskey, like if you can find like the authentic brands, he's like it is unbelievable, and you can flip those bad boys if you really want to. But yeah, yeah. I'm not My that kind of guy. A lot of that. I like to enjoy things. Those yeah, are consumables, like, I'm and I'm it, going yeah. to consume them. <laughs> it's like we don't need to make so. more money <laughs> in a reasonable amount. Yeah, I don't need to make more. I mean, you want to like sell one to a friend or like gift one to a friend. Yeah, well, that's sure, the thing too like, is like gifting it. Like there's like nice knife sets that you can get out there too. Like you yeah. can get there's a whole bunch of stuff, and it's just like I want to bring a whole bunch back. Yeah, tea especially. Like that's going to be like just my Christmas gifts to everyone. It's like, here, Japanese tea, and everyone's going to go, whoa. <laughs> yeah, if but, I could do it again, that's definitely the move. Like, bring the bare minimum that yeah. you need because you can always get stuff out there. It's, you know, we're, we're freaking, we're not surface-based, you know what I mean? Like, yeah, and that's, uh, that's the big thing. So pretty much go on deployment, get as much done as I can, then when I have just free time, take care of my fitness whenever I can. I need to do the physical therapy. Put in that but, time to your body that you should have been putting in. Since yeah. You got well, that injured. And that and just like the uh, the intellectual side of things. Like, I really enjoy it. Flying's been a big part of what I really wanted to do. And that's why I kind of joined the Navy in the first place. And then, uh, yeah, getting that instrument rating would be huge. And like, if I get that while I'm on my fleet side, then uh, when I do my shore tour, I can try and work towards like my commercial rating and then get all that. And then kind of maybe after just go into the airlines or find some, like, flying career path, maybe. That's what's up, man. Yeah. You're not just a window licker. Not no, like I'm all not. These other... Yeah, lick glass, eat ass, you know. <laughs> I knew he was going to so, say I, I wanted to so bad. I've been waiting. You brought it up. <laughs> lick glass, eat ass. Yeah, there we go. Clip that. <laughs> yeah, clip it. Clip it, chat. <laughs> You're going to see that on your Instagram feed, like, God dang it. <laughs> like, man, I, I regret this. And I was Can I sober. bleep it? I was sober when I said I'll it. learn how to bleep it. Yeah. Uh, I mean, there's nothing wrong with, with that. If you're... Yeah, if you're into that, I guess. You're into yeah, that. I'm, not, I'm not judging. It's just to each their own, I suppose. Yeah, and I, I hear that there's a, a new Puss in Boots movie. Oh, uh, yeah, that was, a, that was a good movie. So when we were up in uh, Washington, a friend of ours recommended it to us. And, uh, you know... I slept on it, like, just about everyone else. And he was like, nah, it's a great movie. Like, super, super great movie. And uh, I don't want to spoil it for anyone, but, like, great character development, great story, good animation. Like, it, it was very compelling and just enjoyable. I saw like, it did numbers. Yeah. I saw it was, like, up there. It was, like, right behind uh, The Way of Water, the Avatar movie, for on the on the charts for a while. Yeah, it's, it's a good movie. It's just very well written. And it's just enjoyable for all ages. You think it'll take an Oscar home tomorrow? I ooh, is that is that happening? Oscars is tomorrow. Yeah, it's You're it's kidding. Sunday, March twelfth. Yeah, during the daylight savings. Yeah, yeah. the daylight. shortest weekend of the freaking year. Yeah. They don't care, man. Yeah, that's not wise. But I mean, ha- haven't the ratings been dropping for a while? They have. Chris Rock got slapped. <laughs> they have, but I mean, it's also just oh. part of how they count like traditional ratings. People don't watch TV on like cable. 
Yeah, that's true. In anymore. I want to watch his uh, Netflix special that came out because he talks about the slap. Chris Rocks? Mm-hmm. Yeah. What's he called? Oh, I saw a little bit of it, yeah. It, it was yeah, live, though. Netflix, yeah. It was live at the time, like like a one-cut thing. So whatever were to happen, they would keep it. No, like, no, 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 no. He's, he's got a like, comedy stand-up. Yeah. Life, I thought. So that's why he slapped. No, oh no, yeah, no. we're but, talking uh, about uh, <laughs> Chris Rock. Yeah, we're talking but, about yeah, different But yeah, Chris things. Rock kind of made a joke about Will Smith's. Yeah, I know. I know what you're talking about. Okay. Yeah, they get they have a he's got a uh, a comedy skit that he yeah, came out a, with a, a new special on, on Netflix. Yeah, it's uh, I saw little bits and pieces of it. My roommate was uh, watching it last night until he passed out on the couch unceremoniously. But yeah, it's just the way it is. Oh, I just lost a button. Man, I, I want to see some of these uh, best picture nominees. Of course, you've seen Top Gun Maverick. Yes. And he was self-respecting aviator would. Yeah, Colleen was very uh, happy when she got tickets when it came out Memorial Day. It was amazing to see the joy in his face the entire time. <laughs> yeah, I, I was having a great time. I, I, I like that movie. He's like a, a baby on the escalator. Yeah, it was everything you want you liked about Top Gun, but minus uh, the homoerotic volleyball montage, which you know I think they could have put in. But Yeah, what the heck? To each their own. They could have rerun that. Yeah, you know, we could, we could probably try to see it. Miles Teller, man. Yeah, you know. <laughs> we'll just make our own, like, Lego version, I guess. <laughs> just, like, stop stop motion. Oh, Rooster. <laughs> <laughs> or, uh, yeah, just, like, uh, fan fiction or something like that. Okay, the other ones we see Women Talking. Frances McDormand. I think it's uh, about, like a, a, like, a religious community and something happens and... There's like a cover up. Everything everywhere all at once. That one's badass. And so trippy. I've never seen that. It's uh it's kinda A twenty four. It's 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 mind bending. It's fun. Is it kinda like uh, Asian people too? I, I heard people like drew like parallels to uh Doctor Strange and the Multiverse of Madness, but this was like the good own version. Thing. Yeah. Yeah. Like yeah. it was done well. Yeah. They it, definitely take some uh, It's nominated for tomorrow. Yeah. I'm yeah. confused. I thought that was like a lot, not this year. It, it was. We watched it like when you were on deployment, like a which was just 20. last year. I mean, oh. this is like all movies from last year. Okay, oh, from twenty twenty two. Okay, Banshees of Inisherin. Did you see that? No. It's uh, Colin Farrell and Donahue McGle- Mad Eye Moody. Oh from Harry yeah, Potter. yeah. It's like an Irish. You're talking to movie. a big Harry Potter fan. She lo- she loves <laughs> Harry Potter, dude. You, have you played Hogwarts Legacy? It's really fun. <laughs> oh my god! I'm probably gonna play it after this. Yeah, nice. yeah. They, uh, you can do all kinds of stuff. Triangle of Sadness, The Fablemans, All Quiet on the Western Front. Yeah, that was that was a good one. I want to see that. It's on Netflix, right? Yeah, it is. I still want to see. Uh, well, you still want to see Way of Water, though, don't you? What? Avatar, Avatar Way, of, Way of, Water. of Water. I haven't seen that. Yeah, but you still want to. Oh, see Avatar Two. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. You should. Yeah, she wants. Yeah. We saw it a couple times. <laughs> It's fun. Okay. We watched one uh, at a drive-in movie theater, Ooh, and yeah. we couldn't hear shit. Yeah, because <laughs> we tried to sit in the truck bed. It didn't really work out. And then once at home in Texas, uh, Elvis, that uh, Austin Butler Elvis, and then I that one was good. Oh, for best actor, yeah. And yeah. then uh, Tar. So that's best. Yeah, I don't know. I'm excited. I like the Oscars. Watch. All right. What about you, babe? What are you into recently? Hmm. What you up to? I don't know. Not, I can't think of anything. I don't know. Put you on the spot. Yeah, please don't Come do back that. to it later. <laughs> we, 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 do have, we do standalone episodes. We'll talk about it. <laughs> <laughs> and I'm, you know, shit, I'm really into real estate investing and podcasting and reading books. Oh, yeah. There's plenty of good books out what there. What kind of books are you reading? <clears throat> I'm reading... Three books in rotation wow. because I get like I like to read one chapter and then just switch it up completely. One book I'm reading is uh, is about women in China. Like uh, you know, there's the one child policy, so that like all these women, I'm, all these girls like out in the country, a lot of times were were like you know aborted, but then this phenomenon happened that in the cities they were more likely to keep them and then also pour all their resources into the daughter in a way that normally wouldn't have been afforded to them. So there, there's all these like very educated, uh, like basically, you know, 
straight A Chinese women that are like having these amazing careers, but they're having this friction with like the traditional, you know, societal roles in China so that there's like this intense pressure for them to, you know, date and marry. And there's just not a lot of men that like meet their criteria now that they have like their own careers and, and, uh, yeah, it's just kind of an interesting, like, okay, 21st century, you know, deal with them. That is really interesting. Yeah, yeah. It's, hard to, it's hard to date up when they're just peers at that point. Exactly. So it's, like, kind of the expectation that your husband still makes more money than you, is more successful, and yet there's, like, hard, you know, there's still a few, but there's so many women that are just more educated than, like, thousands of these, or millions of these, like, country, you know, uneducated men and stuff like that, so... So kind of particular problem in like after effects years and years later of like a you know something crazy like the one child policy. Uh there's that and then I'm reading uh you know Dave Chang? He's a celebrity chef. He did Momofuku. No, sorry. He You think so? I think I know. Yeah, okay. He like kinda like changed up the like rest uh New York food scene at at one point in like the early two thousands. Now he's kind of like a celebrity chef. I'm reading his memoir. It's about, like, how he was, like, just kind of a fuck-up and kind of wanted, like, to, like, you know, end it all. But, like, he just found cooking and then, like, kind of did it his own way. But, like, throughout the entire time he's having all the success, he had, like, this, like, crippling anxiety and, like, just wanted to, like, make something that uh, would be his legacy. And he felt like... You know, his life was falling apart the entire time that, you know, on the outside, he's like a world-renowned chef and just kind of dealing with, like, success and never feeling like you've really made it and stuff like that. Uh, and then the third one is called The Inevitable, and it's like the 12 forces that are driving the future. It's like talking about how, like, technology uh, is pushing us and, and trying to clarify in what ways, whether it's... A couple of them are, like, becoming, which is, like, how everything is, like, con- nothing's ever done. Like, everything is always becoming the latest version, and that's, like, how it's pretty much always going to be, like, with technology. And then cognifying, kind of talking about how uh, artificial intelligence is introducing itself into, like, everything now, which I'm sure you all have seen all this. We talk about this on the show a lot, but, like, chat GPT and, like, the different art ones and all this crazy stuff. Yeah. Uh, flowing. Mm-hmm. Anyway, there's 12 of them. but Yeah. Those are all really heavy books, it sounds like. Yeah, yeah, it's fun, though. It's fun to just, like, okay, I can't, I literally can't think about this anymore. Just switch to the next book. Yeah. And then I fall asleep reading uh, just one of these classic westerns, Comanche Moon. Comanche Moon, huh? Yeah, that's yeah. Cool. It's super fun. You know, so that's what I'm, that's what I'm into. That's what I'm up to right now. Yeah, I mean... Uh, there's been a couple good books that we've read recently. She's gotten me into, uh, what was it? It was a uh, Rich Roll. Yeah, that was, yeah, you that was a Rich while Roll. ago. That was, but um, Finding Ultra yeah. by Rich Roll. Um, Pretty much the guy's a uh, vegan, like, ultra marathon athlete. Oh. And the guy was in his, like, early 40s or something. He started in his 40s. Yeah, he, like, started in his 40s, and he ended up becoming one of, like, the most, uh, I guess, fit men to exist. And he was, like, all vegan, pretty much. Like, he completely uh, redid his entire, like, lifestyle. So, originally, he was, like, what, a swimmer in high school and college, but, like, alcohol kind of, like, messed him up. And then, eventually, I guess he refound himself after, like, he had a uh, coming to Jesus moment, I guess, or, like, a coming to, like, like an epiphany. Life. Yeah, he had an epiphany. Reality. Yeah, he came to reality that, like, hey, if I keep eating cheeseburgers and living this way and being like over 200 pounds at like five foot nine. He's like, I'm going to die very quickly. Before I get to see my daughter married, it was like he walked up the stairs and like couldn't catch his breath. He was like, what the hell? It yeah, was but, just like, oh shit. Like, yeah, it was an oh shit moment. And eventually he like turned his life around and like he revamped like his uh, diet. He calls it fueling pretty much. And then he uh, revamped like his whole training program because he used to be like a sprint like a swimmer or something like that, but he had to realize that uh, sprint athletics versus, like, uh, your more, like, aerobic athletics is very different, so the training is 
very different. You can't just give 100% for it. you got to dial it back, and there's certain thresholds for it. But that was a really good book. And yeah, then, and he does, like, crazy ultra challenges. Like, he did, like, seven, like, seven marathons in seven countries or something. No, no. It was uh, or? it was on like the Hawaiian island. It was like seven uh, uh, Ironmans or something like that. Yeah, something crazy. It was it was a lot. <laughs> yeah, he does some pretty crazy ultra stuff. He, yeah, he ended up doing it with a buddy of his in like ten days, like seven, That's like insane. ultras or whatever. Yeah. And then the other book that I've been reading that I still haven't managed to finish yet, but is a really good book, is uh, Atomic Habits. Oh, I've been meaning to get into that one. Yeah, it's an it's an excellent book. I, I really like it. Like, uh, pretty much, he's got like his four, like uh, four things, and on how to like make it easy, make it obvious, like make it attractive, and then like satisfying. And then he's got like his antithesis for it to make like bad habits hard, like uh, make it difficult, make it like unattractive, make it uh, hard, like that sort of stuff. Like very, very good uh, habit building and whatnot. And it's uh, if you stick to it, you can. You can do pretty much anything. The sky's the limit. Have you been trying to implement it with anything in particular? Uh, pretty much everywhere. It's just I keep letting myself get pulled every other way. And uh, I've been failing in a lot of regards, but uh, there's some marginal success. And that's the big hey, man, thing. That's, taking that's the your wins. Game, that's the big thing is taking your wins wherever you can get them. Yeah. And it's something that you know you might not have been doing. Yeah, well, it's small changes. If you make a 1% change over a very long time, it'll be a lot of distance. Let's turn it to some fun questions that I might end up clipping out yeah. later. Okay, guys. What emotion do you feel the most? Okay. What emotion do you feel the most? Rage. Let's start with Pauline. <laughs> oh, my goodness. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Kind of. Down with the sickness. Um. I just get angry sometimes of how people treat others, um, mainly in the fact of people try and warp things to their benefit without consideration to, like, the human soul or, like, what it does to other people, and they try and get away with it, and it makes me really mad. Do you see this more, like, people cutting corners at work or, like, in society or more, like, in the media or... Where do you um, I, find yourself feeling directing? I see it a lot in leadership, wherever, whether that's government leadership, whether that's leadership at work, whether sometimes just leadership in a business, like that's where I see it and it makes me mad. And you like feel like they ought to be holding themselves to a higher standard. Yeah, yeah, definitely. Or at least called out and held accountable. That's all I like. Hold yourself accountable once it's been ruled a certain way it's wrong all right yeah that that makes sense my friend um rachel and i had a conversation kind of similar to that like i don't want to get like this a heated topic thing but like the police we're talking about like why that's corrupt sometimes and i feel like it's super tempting to have if you have like a lower salary job and someone comes to you like hey do you want like this sum of money to like let me get away with this i feel like if you're in that situation it'd be hard to deny and then it's also like but it's also frustrating because you're supposed to, like, not do that stuff and, like, protect and, yeah. I don't know. Yeah. When you're in a leadership position, like, you, you're held to a higher – you should hold yourself to a higher standard because, like, you have so much responsibility over people. Like, yeah. they're trusting you with that, and there's needs to be respect both ways. Yeah, it's also easy to say one thing and do the other, do another, like – when someone asks you, like, hey, if you would you take a bribe, you go, hey, no way. But then, like, you know, you're down on your luck, like, you're not making ends meet, and some person goes, hey, how would you like $10,000 to make this problem go away? It's, like, that's so tempting, you know? Yeah. It's yeah. it's difficult because in that moment now it's, like, you're at your lowest. You're not fighting right. when you're 100%. You're fighting when, like, you're at your absolute lowest point. And it's such a tangible benefit, too. Yeah, like it's, 10, it, well, 10 it's so easy to yeah cut that corner, you know? And, yeah, I, I, I see what you're saying. Like, it's difficult. But I think that's when it's good to remember, like, that rage is, like, righteous rage to be like, this. there is a cost, you know? Because sometimes whenever you're presented with a bribe, it's like, well, who's it hurting? Blah, blah, blah. It's so easy to rationalize. You need to, like, step back and be like, all right, what do I, you know, what do I stand for, like? Yeah. 
All right. Yeah. What about you, Forrest? What do you, what, what uh, <laughs> feeling you feel the most? Uh, Glee? I wish. Uh, debauchery? Fear. Debauchery, yeah, fear debauchery. Yeah, fear. <laughs> fear, anger, hate, suffering. Yeah. Oh my God. No, none of those, but... Uh, <laughs> yeah. Yeah, yeah, the dark side. Uh, I feel like uh, in the last year, the feeling that I have felt the most uh, would be... Could you start that? Again, we're just gonna leave yeah. these two to run. Yeah. Keep going though. Or? Yeah. Keep going. Yeah. So, uh, I definitely say the biggest one I've been feeling is uh, dumb, and it's definitely because of work. The way that uh, work has things go, it's a completely. Uh, it's not what you would call conventional. And I'm trying to think what word to you would. I'm trying to use think. in in substitute of. Well, dumb. I would say inadequate, but that's not really the case. It's just like. It makes me think of one Maybe of Maybe like Einstein's. confounded? Yeah, confounded. Well, that'd like, be a good one. It's just perplexed. Awestruck stupef- not, awestruck's not the like, right one because that's like being in a cathedral or something. Yeah. I was thinking it to myself. Or, uh, confused. Yeah, I just, that- feel, <laughs> I just feel dumb or just like <laughs> useless. And the, the the big thing that I get out of that is it makes me think of. <laughs> Bro, I can really trust <laughs> Yeah, me, I mean, I'm just like sitting there. I'm like, how? They're like, oh, yeah, it's this, it's this way. And it's like that is the most like counterintuitive way of thinking but once you finally understand it like it makes sense but it makes me think like so many times i'd like sit there and i'm like i feel like i'm a goldfish and the metric by which my success is measured is my ability to climb a tree and it's like i can swim i can do that all day but you say climb this tree it's like i'm not a monkey i can't climb the tree i'm a goldfish it's like i have skills that are meant to that that are better suited for other, uh, uh, you know, situations. But then I am told to do a job or wear many different hats for the job, and uh, I'm expected to be successful. And that that's been difficult, and it has made me feel more stupid than I've ever felt in my life. And I I know I'm not an idiot, but never have I felt so stupid. <laughs> it is truly truly humbling. That is, I mean, one, that was just a beautiful articulation of something that I definitely <laughs> yeah, I mean, I relate think, to, man. I think we've all felt that way before, at least in that, yeah. uh, our line of work. Just trying to be, like, molded into, like, what is it that, what would the ideal person for this be, and, like, where are my skills? I'm like, I mean, it's not complete, like, yeah, well, opposite, but, like, it's like, like you're dang, this piece, isn't really. You're a piece of clay, pretty much, and they're molding you into what, I guess tool they need for the job. Right. Is how I, I see it. And it has been a very painful process <laughs> becoming that tool that they need for the job. <sighs> but yeah, for all the people out there that know what I'm talking about, I, I feel for you. <laughs> <laughs> on your way to Taco? Yeah, on, on the way to Taco. Yeah. I know you're going to get it. Yeah, next two months or so, actually. Let's go. Yeah. I'll make it. <laughs> wow! Look at the naysayer over here. Well, before you get back, yeah, <laughs> that's plenty. That's yeah. way more than too much. Yeah, that's generous. You'll be fine. You'll be fine. What, what about, about you? What about you, babe? Um, I would say like confused for sure. I don't know why. And then like grateful lately. Mm. Um, that's positive. Yeah, look yeah. at that. We got a positive side <laughs> on the table now. Uh, <laughs> even it out. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Um. I feel like I frequently feel annoyed, but, like, I try to catch myself when I'm feeling annoyed because it doesn't benefit me. So I try to kind of, like, manage those and do it in a healthier way. Um, Do you have any ones? I'm trying to figure out what the word is, but I'm, like, always trying to – I'm scheduling a lot of my own stuff, just trying to make the most of this kind of in-between weird little limbo period that I'm in. So I, I actually do feel satisfied a lot, which You're hungry. <laughs> yeah. more. I'm like trying to like yeah. stoke it. Yeah, I'm like trying to maintain a comfortable level of all I can say is anxiety, <coughs> or okay. or a comfortable level or like a sustainable amount of like this isn't gonna last. Like you better make the most of this time. Like whether that's with working out or the stuff I'm trying to work out for, you know, my careers or trying to, you know, take recovery seriously. I don't know if I told you, but I I was in 
rehab in in January. The Navy sent me to like some like on base rehab. So I'm just trying to like advance everything uh, that is important to me uh, every single day and uh, try not to waste it because ultimately like I know that this is a springboard period and I'm grateful to not have to deal with some of these frustrations that you're you so well articulated before but like at the same time it's scary too because the safety net is is a little bit like has kind of vanished or maybe it's vanishing so yeah whatever emotion you attach to that um i think that's kind of what i'm dealing with and some days i'm like you know and yeah. other days i'm like oh, this is the best i i'm on my path so yeah yeah that's good yeah okay let's do one more because we're actually pushing uh hour 45 but uh Oh, while one. you look for a question, yeah, I don't like to feel comfortable. Like, I feel like yeah, I try yeah. to catch myself when I'm feeling comfortable because yeah. you don't grow out of your comfort zone. So, I feel like, I'm always trying to kind of do something outside of it. Yeah, I want to be, like, at the end of the day, just gassed and yeah. feel like, dang, I've really mm-hmm. left it all out there. Yeah, you put That's in profound. all the work you could. Yeah, I was about yeah. to say that. Profound. Yeah, just kind of, like, I guess minimize regrets yeah. to the you know to the extent that you can your circumstances you know well, while you're looking for that question you made me think of my would you, would you oh rather. Yeah, so, yeah, hit me. Uh, so i was thinking of this would you rather and i was talking to a couple people last night about it so that's colleen too and uh pretty much the would you rather was would you rather restart your life with all the knowledge that you have now as a freshman in high school or would you rather be 50 years old like you pretty much just like the movie click like boom now you're just old but like you remember all the stuff that you had already done and you have it made. Does anyone ever pick the old one? Can I go uh, So far, no. So I need oh, to kind of change it. I picked the old one. Oh, she did, yeah. I was going to say the old one because I like where my life is now and if I would have to go back to where I was as a <sighs> freshman and I would want to Ugh. be where I am, I wouldn't want to redo all those things and like, no, I have to redo it. So I feel like <sighs> once is enough. That's true. You might yeah. not. And like, through all the trials and tribulations, like, we were meant to be on the path that we are right now. Like we are where we are supposed to be. Um, so if I had to go back and redo it with just myself and not my faith or God watching out for me, like I would fuck it up. Yeah, <laughs> that's true. You would to... definitely, I would definitely be hella reckless. You know, yeah. like feeling like I could. I already have this mindset of like I know where I can take things i mean yeah. you could get out on crypto would, at the right time yeah yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah. I, would, I would be tempted to not go through things that i know would not work however all those things that didn't work out brought me to where i am today in a relationship with you in my career like even running like it's just different it would have been like it wouldn't yeah. have worked out and i like love looking back and seeing like connecting the dots like why did this happen it's like oh that happened because of that and like starting to see them connect like i yeah, like that things, yeah I just don't want to be 50 also. Well, yeah, yeah, that was my Let's thing, too. I, like, I really don't want to be 50. If, yeah, but it's like, what if you're that's 50 and running ultras? Right there is what like, it is, yeah. yeah what, why are you afraid of old age? Like, why don't you guys want to be 50? I want to, like, live all these memories. <laughs> I don't want to just think about them. Like, if I could go back to being a freshman in high school, then I get to live everything again. Like, I mean, part of it would be tedious, but part of it would be so amazing. I mean, I could kick it back to you're a seventh grader <laughs> now in middle school dealing with all those hormones and... All that angst. It's not a phase, mom. Yeah, it's not a phase. Yeah, you I, get, just, I, I know I out. had my Bieber haircut, so that was. <laughs> I could definitely see yeah. that. I want to put it out there that I would find Alyssa Lowe, even if I went back <laughs> to high school. I can feel you being <laughs> pissed that I would pick that. Huh? I would still find you. I, I'm so confused. Why? Did you <laughs> <laughs> I'm not saying I need to redo everything. I am grateful for where. <laughs> <laughs> You're gonna make us fight. <laughs> that's a banger, though. Yeah, I know. That's, that's a that's very a good, good one. one. Yeah, I mean, yeah, I know you're gonna be waxing on that, like net three. <laughs> yeah, I know. Right there, I'm gonna be like, hmm, I need to broach this topic with everyone. Yeah. <laughs> Run that with your air crew. Yeah. Ah, uh, wow. What do you think? I don't know. I'm trying to find like a harder, deeper one. I guess. I saw. <laughs> oh, jeez. Perfect day. <laughs> Is that too softball? Um, you could, I guess. Dang, some of these are... Wait, that one, that that one would be kind of That perfect day hard. one really, really just made me think. I think my perfect day 
would be able to drive to work without having to be stuck behind some slow poke. <laughs> no, no, no. Start from the top. Yeah, You're not start from the top. working in your perfect day. Yeah, no, no, yeah. Perfect day is a weekend. <laughs> My perfect day is just things just working out. <laughs> it's that simple. Like, is that too much to ask that I'm just, like, in the fast lane, some person's not making 45 and a 60? Like, is that so hard to ask for in Jacksonville? <laughs> <laughs> okay, perfect day. Perfect day. That's... Perfect day. Being with you, honey. <laughs> <laughs> what would be your perfect day? Uh, not going to work. Um, That's a good one. That's a start. Uh, Let's see. Where do you wake up on your perfect day? In my bed. Uh, <laughs> it be a vacation. Uh, va- oh, vacation would be good. Uh, perfect day. Oh. Let's table that one. Yeah. <laughs> that one's too I mean, you can yeah. be, You can go anywhere like on a perfect day. Open. Breakfast in bed, maybe. What about crumbs? Crumbs. <laughs> oh, oh would crumbs. you eat toast? I don't know. Yeah. Is it? Do you guys want to um, answer this one? Do you do any types of conversation make you uncomfortable? <laughs> uh, relationship podcast. <laughs> no, y'all crushed it. No, if I'm you were uncomfortable, then um, <laughs> I didn't know. Ooh, red flags. Ooh, That's red a good flags. One. Red That's flags a in a relationship. and change you or make fun of your ideas. Oh. Those are both uh, very red flags. Quite red. I think of red flags. Uh, I don't know. Maybe maybe I'm the red flag. <laughs> uh, wow. Give me some examples. Uh, some of them are like... Like gaslighting. Like I can... Turn our... Yeah, some of them are like he doesn't have a bed frame. Finance, Ooh, yeah, that's, finance that's, uh, majors. <laughs> Yeah, you his walk favorite, you walk into his apartment. It's just a lawn chair and like an Xbox or right, something. Right. Yeah, his favorite movie is Wolf of Wall Street. Yeah, with yeah. their parents and they're like thirty. Yeah, something. that's that's a red flag. Uh, you check out the back of their car and they have tools, but their tools are duct tape and like a shovel and a bag or something. Some female <laughs> ones are like, uh, geez, that's, yeah, yeah, that's, 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 right. that's Some a, female yeah. ones are like, she knows, she knows the bouncer and the bartender. Oh yeah. That's a good one. Yeah. And, or something like that. Uh, what, what was that? She expects you to pay for everything. Yeah. So never right. wants to go halves. Yeah. yeah. She's yeah, well, your cousin. Oh yeah. That's a, that's a red flag. Yeah. <laughs> oh, that's a red flag on both sides. <laughs> yeah. Oh, only for women. Only for women. <laughs> Only for- <laughs> <laughs> oh my gosh! Oh man, what do we have oh, here? Okay, biggest your- pet peeve. Yeah, I read that one too. Well, we kind of did that, didn't we? No, I don't think no, so. I don't think so. Uh, oh, what's your? Oh, she- she's got a lot to say. Do it. <laughs> when the trash is full and you don't take out the trash, not saying it. You do this. Your roommates do it, and then people at work do it. So just take out the trash. <laughs> It's yeah, full. you can't put it. Freaking Americans, man. Yeah, to caveat, <laughs> on Japanese that. people would be like, "I'm taking that out of the trash." <laughs> yeah, to caveat no. on that, like some simple little task, like you know, just throwing your crap away, or just like, you know, like I understand, like it's the job of like the, uh, or the way we see it is the job of the like wait staff to be able to like clean the table and stuff. But it's not so hard to just kind of wipe it down with your napkin real quick and just stack the plates and just boom. Now you can just take the plates. Like that's not so hard. Or like. We were walking on the beach, and people are just, there's just trash. And it's like, it's not so hard to just pick up Hate the trash. That. Or, Hate that, man. I, here we go. Biggest pet peeve oh, is I I am in the freaking uh, parking lot, put, put, in, put my shop, shopping cart away, and there's just shopping carts all over the parking <laughs> lot. And literally, it's like maybe 30 feet from where you would just put it in yeah. to the, the little, like, cart uh, corral area. Like, it's not that hard. Some society's crumbling yeah. moments. Yeah, it's like this is this is the uh, the metric, the litmus test of self governance. If you oh, can't yeah. take that cart back to the uh, the cart like corral, like you cannot govern yourself. <laughs> <laughs> Do you have any pet peeve? Uh, there, there we have. You it. go, you go, and don't say like chewing. <laughs> Oh, well, I mean, that is one. But my the biggest pet peeve I think of is kind of silly. It's like I hate when, um, 
like people are walking by and they um like and get in your way or something and they say sorry instead of excuse me i don't know why it just makes me so <laughs> mad no because i kind of feel like you should like only apologize and say sorry when you actually mean it so just like saying it for like uh, mean, meaningless things i don't like that sorry. yeah so i tried to like get into the habit of saying excuse me so when i i say sorry and my, my apologies i like genuinely mean it yeah that's, good. that's uh wow Give words power and keep Get it. Get on her level. Yeah. I need to. <laughs> no, I I knew words someone that would things. say it a lot, and I started counting one day. Sorry, <laughs> I got. I guess how many I got in um, fifteen minutes. How many? Fifteen. Yes. No. More. Uh, twenty. Thirty. <laughs> Start the timer. <laughs> right. It's <laughs> uh, like a tick. And yeah, That's it was like a nervous thing, though. I feel like that people do that. So sorry. Mine's probably just, you know, it's a Jacksonville one, but people driving recklessly and, like, not signaling is a big oh, one. Oh, yeah, that's that's really annoying. Or, like, getting in front of you. Like, they speed up to get in front of you, and then they slow down. Yeah. Like, you could have just been behind me. Like, <laughs> yeah. you're going to slow down. Like, keep it. Or you're just kind of just driving it. down on, like, one of the, the interstate or the beltway, and you got some person that's kind of just, like, merging into your lane. It looks like they're merging into your lane, and you're just like, bro, what are you doing? And then they're kind of just, like, slowly moving over to the other part like just stay in the lane yeah it's not that hard this is how i know that we can't have uh you know flying cars in like the 2030s is people can't even drive on two axis yeah you're not gonna have <laughs> you're not gonna be able to deal yeah okay Ooh. let's do one more yeah one i like more. these questions you do a card or you want to do for this if you could <laughs> if you could be famous for one thing uh, what it be? What would it be for, and why? So it doesn't need to be like freaking Justin Bieber famous. It can be like in your field famous, you know. I think the one thing I think I'm already famous for this is like how many people <laughs> knew me in Pensacola. Yes, <laughs> like everyone. I'd walk into a bar and everyone's like, "Hey, how you doing?" I'm like, "Who are you?" <laughs> I was bad. Yeah, like I he's, was. Uh, I was a, a niche mess. celebrity. Yeah, I was. Uh, yeah. Had a little bit of a critical acclaim. Freaking Seville Quarter. A local celebrity. Denizen. <laughs> oh, I feel so bad for that one bartender that'd see me every Friday. She's like, oh, God, this guy again. Freaking Pensacola. Yeah. It's like going back to college. What about you, Colleen? Um, I guess I want to say writing. I haven't, I have a lot of ideas in my head. And I'm trying to like journal or write stuff down. But one day I would like to publish it or do something with it. Like, just be able to have people think in a different way. Yeah, or it reach people, at yeah. least, yeah. Yeah, tell them about your blog. No, I no? Okay. renew Never mind. it, okay. so it's over with. Yeah. <laughs> it's, it's, start it. it's you can always now. pick it back up. I will. That's will one of the best it. things about getting into podcasting after I podcasted for, you know, a few years, end of college and after college. And then just, you know, I ended up taking it down because I wasn't sure, like, with the Navy. Like, oh, yeah, you told me about this. Security yeah. clearance and stuff. I was just like, oh, just make it easy to take it down. And it's been so much fun to get back into it and have this to look forward to. Even to be nervous about and then be doing it and be like, this is, like, a conversation that I wouldn't have been able to have. And get to relive it and have it kind of, like, preserved in wax on the Internet. Nice. But uh, what about you, babe? Famous nice. for and what and why? <clears throat> Um, maybe just like a catchphrase like that. Damn, Daniel, back at it again with the white fans. Or so like a like niche that. internet thing that's yeah. just like, are you that person? Yeah. Some Vine energy kind of thing. <laughs> yes, <laughs> Vine. That's oh, good. Like that is that. a good one. Yeah. I would love to be a multi-hyphenate, like Donald Glover. <laughs> and just be able oh, to, yeah, so, yeah, just be able to try different things and, and like oh it that pops off and just get to try new things yeah he did like movies he was in TV shows like music that sort of stuff like he's done a lot okay. just be able to get just access to do different things and have fun with different projects which is like such a cop out I feel like just famous for everything <laughs> yeah well that's, that's something to aspire to be you know yeah all right guys um, that was I love lamp episode eight. Yay, yes. we did Thanks it. For, My buddy Saunders coming. and his wife, Colleen. Wife. Yeah, that's crazy. We're adults, man. <laughs> Thank you yeah. for Coming up on one year. Yeah. Thanks for ha uh, coming on and, uh, you know, Godspeed on deployment. We're going to miss you. And, uh, you know, 
Don't be a stranger. I'll, I'll check in on you. Yeah. Around uh, <laughs> July or August or something. Yeah, let me know if you want anything while I'm out there. Oh, for sure. Yeah. Okay. One, two, three. Lamp, lamp off. off. Nice.